hello. I wonder if you participated in any VE Day celebrations. We had an afternoon tea at home with some homemade bunting as we celebrate freedom and victory in Europe. It seems somewhat weird that we do that in a lockdown situation with many restrictions in place. Some have even likened this virus situation to that of fighting in the Second World War with the words enemy and frontline being used. And while I believe that we need to take the current situation seriously, I'm not so sure the horror and devastation of World War II and ours are similar. Whilst we are fighting the virus and we have people on the front line, we don't have bombs falling on our city and we are united with everyone around the world to fight it. Our perspective of what is tough is also probably different from the generation that fought in World War II. And our view of things, our perspective, is what I'd like to focus on today. I hope this series will help us all in these lockdown times, the times when we yo-yo between many extreme feelings and emotions. And it's okay we do this. We are in very different and trying times. I'm also very conscious of those among us that are still hearing other bad news, more traditional bad news, and finding themselves in circumstances that would change their lives forever. Not all bad news is related to the coronavirus. We all cope with bad news differently. Some struggle and their faith disappears, and for others, they cope incredibly well, and they are a great witness to us of how strong our faith should be in tough times. And maybe you know people that can manage in the worst of times and you wonder how do they even get out of bed in the morning? Maybe you've seen people keep calm, get on with things when you're convinced that you would not cope and wonder how they do it. How do Christians who experience great tragedies or tough times still keep going and accept their circumstances? How do persecuted Christians around the world today in 2020 keep, still keep their faith strong? What can we do when we feel like there is nothing we can do? Maybe you've lost someone, had bad news about your job, investments gone down, not seen family for ages, maybe an old addiction has reared its head and now you're feeling jealous and resentful of others around you who seem to be coping. It can seem like everyone else has it together except you. You're tempted to run, hide, quit, Give in or drink or Netflix binge your way out of your feelings. Maybe on a really bad day, it's all of them. And that's okay. We've all been in that boat, but you don't have to stay there. I mentioned last week that when we feel desperate like this, God is not absent, apathetic or angry with us. When we are in difficult times, we are in good company because the Christian faith was born in difficult times. The men and women that bring us the stories of Jesus had a very different perspective on suffering and the things that they went through than we do. And their key to unlocking the pain and stress from their difficult situation is that they believed that their circumstances were actually coming from God. And I wonder how you would feel about your situation if you knew that God was the one who had given it to you. Now, I don't believe for even one second that the coronavirus is from God. I think we need to look to the brokenness in our humanity that does look, not, doesn't look after animals in a humane way for that. But the lockdown, the social distancing might just be a gift from God. It is for our benefit after all. We are finding out things about ourselves, learning to cope like never before and realise what are the really important things. Other saints that have gone before us have said that when they could see their situation as coming from God, that changed it for them. They could at last find peace in what they were facing. It may seem weak just staying in and social distancing, keeping away from one another. It hardly seems strong and productive. However it is, by precisely doing this, that makes the whole community safer and more secure as the virus spread is limited and hopefully contained. For me, when I've been in desperate times, and there have been plenty, in order to adjust and adapt to what's going on, I tend to cry out to God, I need you, get me through this, maybe just for the next hour I need it. And you know what? He's never let me down. This idea of viewing or seeing this adversity as being from God has come from Paul, who wrote most of the New Testament. He was a Jewish scholar who converted soon after the resurrection and he goes on to leave everything to follow Jesus. 
He left behind fame, security and friends so that he could pursue what he knew was the truth. And with all of that going on, with all of the persecution facing him, he was willing to take on the world as his mission field. For 20 years, he traveled and planted churches right across the Mediterranean. His actions and those of the early churches form most of what we understand about how to follow Jesus. And interestingly, after he had become a Christian, something happened to Paul. It was something so devastating that he ensured he would never become conceited. It was something that caused him much distress that he begged God to change it and make things easier for him. We read about it in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. Now, we don't know exactly what his thorn was. It might have been epilepsy, depression, malaria, migraines. We just don't know. But it was something that kept happening and something that was painful, humiliating and debilitating. Three times he asked. That's not just a casual thing. It really meant something to have it removed from his life. And Paul says that God's reply was, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. And maybe you find God's reply as shocking as it is comforting. Is God really saying, get on with it, you will cope, I am here for you? Yes, he is. He says, my grace is sufficient for you. He is all we need to get through, no matter what we're going through, how, how tough life is. God is sufficient. He is all we need. And this is where we see Paul accepting his circumstances as being from God. God is involved. He's not distant, and therefore he could accept it and find peace. We read that he says, therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecution, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And Paul is saying the more issues we have, we have to rely on God to get through. And therefore, the more of God we have and experience. So that is why we can be happy about difficulties because it gives God the opportunity to come and work within us and for others to see him at work in us. Because when we cope in hard times, when we manage and get by, it's not us who coped. On my own, I couldn't have coped with the things that I've been through. It is in fact God that carries us through so that we should rejoice that he's been active in our lives and holding us and making us strong. Paul says it's so we would not get big headed and go, oh, look what I can do. Look how I can cope. He could say, yes, life is not good, but I will get through because my God will get me through. And to keep Paul from being conceited, he was given a thorn in his side. The fact that it was given demonstrates that there was a purpose and a promise in whatever afflicted him. It was to help him lean on God more, to trust God and to not think he could do this life on his own. If you believe that God can change your circumstances but chooses not to, you have the option, the choice to receive the painful situation, the crummy circumstances as a gift from him with a purpose and a promise. I say option or choice because I believe this is one of those things that nobody can require you to do. I can't make you see things differently or have a different perspective. That is something you have to choose to do on your own. There is another example of someone else's suffering and it being related to something that God had given them. Remember your salvation? The salvation of the world hung in the balance of a similar decision made by Jesus, our saviour, on the night before his crucifixion. It was a choice he made in the Garden of Gethsemane. In Luke 22, we are told how Jesus withdrew from his friends and he knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. Jesus was checking if the burden, the cup that he was about to bear had indeed come from God, because if it had, then he wanted to do it God's will and carry that burden. Doing God's will was more important than his own. And knowing that God would be glorified through it and that God would give him all the grace and the strength he needed 
to get him through it, he receives the strength given by the angels and faces the task in front of him. When he knew the cup was from God, his perspective changed and he submitted to all of what was about to happen. And in doing that, freed us all from the power of death and sin. And the promise that we too will be sustained in our suffering and difficult circumstances is there for us as well. We might not always see the angels, but they will be there. Jesus also shows us that we have permission to ask that our cups be taken away and our thorns removed. It doesn't say it will happen, and it didn't for Jesus, but we can ask. We can cope because we follow Jesus and say, not my will, but your will, God. And in the meantime, we are free to rest in the peace and promise that what is going on comes as a gift and with a purpose. So think about your negative situation or circumstance again. The not seeing your family and friends, the uncertainty, all of this, and change your perspective and pray and say, God, when are you glorified in this? If you are facing something like cancer, lack of employment, illness, relationship, breakup, death of a loved one, pray and ask God, what does it mean that I now have? God, what are you giving me to get through? Where will your glory be shown? What insight, what treasure, what nugget will you get from God that no one else will get to help you through your situation? Whatever you are facing, you will get through it. You will have the strength to see you through not because you are strong and have everything you need and in control but because Jesus died on the cross for us he made it through and made a way that we too can experience the glory and power that is our heavenly father it doesn't mean that we can't share how we're feeling or our concerns or worries with others it means that we also share how we coped how we managed how we dusted ourselves off and picked ourselves up and carried on Why not try and take a different perspective on your situation? Why not ask some growing questions of how your life and your mindset might be different if we let the power of Jesus come in and leave us with his peace? You may be familiar with the poem Footprints in the Sand, which is a beautiful illustration of this passage. When we are in difficult times, God is there carrying us through it always, not just sometimes, but all of the time. Someone I believe needs to hear this today, that right now, God is carrying you. You are not alone. For the rest of us, maybe a different perspective on our situation might just help us manage and to trust God at this time. I really pray that this message of Jesus and his followers has helped you today. May you be blessed. May you go in peace. Please don't hesitate to get in touch if you would like to talk or you need any help in your next steps in your faith journey. I'll be happy to talk to you, to connect with you. Just get in touch. You'll see it at the end of the slide today. So God bless you. Take care. And I look forward to seeing you all soon. Tune in next week for the next one in our series. God bless you. Bye bye.